What up guys, this is Ollie from Double Cinema Gamers and I'm going to be giving you a bit of a look at the Bioshock Infinite trailer slash gameplay video. I'm going to be dissecting it, I'm going to be, you know, looking at the key points to it. Um, made of course by 2K and Irrational Games. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to this game, it's going to be released in 2012, one I'll definitely be pre-ordering. Now as the gameplay video starts, you'll see here there is a man with a sombrero and a moustache which I think is representing a Mexican and someone you don't get to see very clearly a woman there um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what all these represent but that's definitely an American leader of some sort uh, but yeah that's obviously a propaganda poster uh, against the foreign hordes, which I think is a bit harsh, but still, um, it's yeah, it's obviously a very nationalist area here um, in Colombia, the new town where this is, well, the new city, sorry, where this is set. And I'll just to give you a bit of a background, as you can see the video carrying on. Um, Colombia is um, a floating city made like a hot air balloon, but there's lots of different buildings. Um, made to show America's power. Now it's clear there's some form of in like domestic, well, um, well violence within Colombia because as you can see here, a church has just been blasted to the floor. The bell lands right in front of you, which is fairly convenient at, uh, at the start of the game. So yeah, um, that's a bit weird there because you just saw the poster that was on the floor regenerate itself now this bit I think is really strange um, there's a building on fire Harper's Grocery number six as you see on the banner uh, and she's sweeping something but she fails to notice the buildings on fire now that's obviously some um, statue of significance um, I suppose it's a bit like the Statue of Liberty serves some purpose to the city I would imagine um, but obviously I think we'll find out more about this later in the game. As you walk past a dead horse, which is nice, shows they don't care about the environment. That could have been recycled. Um, now you see the first glimpse of the transport system as the freight thing goes over on the uh, overhead line. Here's a lonely man sat on a bench feeding some crows. And then you can finally hear in the background, um, obviously some poli politician, um, it's Salson, Saltonstall, that's his man, that's his name, um, he's obviously against foreign, foreigners as you can probably hear there, um, so yeah he's got that typical, uh, political American democratic look. Um, so there you take your first gun and this is going to be my first pause, pause point uh, as you can see his eyes have glowed yellow you have a gold sniper so it's pretty nice um, and there's a decent shot for a no scope there um, but uh, as you can see by the yellow eyes there's obviously some form of possessive spirit in this game because uh, obviously a human doesn't just get yellow eyes and start having a big go at you. Um, so that's quite interesting what part that will play. Um, but it certainly looks... Um, well, I'm a bit curious as to what it means. Um, it could mean that the enemies have particular powers. Or it could mean that they are controlled by someone that has that impact. Or, But I don't know. So yeah, we'll carry on the video now. And then he goes all weird and and he summons Charles, the lonely guy on the bench, with all his crows that attack you uh, and start flapping. So tries to get some no scopes here. No scopes. And then you butt him over the edge and he falls onto a cable car. Um, it's lucky there was a cable car there. And then that guy goes off. So there's obviously something very fishy going on there. Um, what uh, links the politicians have with the public and some kind of special powers there with the crows 
yeah, it looks a bit, uh, looks a bit uh, odd, certainly. Um, then you look over the edge, you pull up his, um, well, you while this? using telekinesis, you pull up that drink he's got, and you get your first power, <laughs> uh, the crows. That's obviously, and then another time I'm going to pause here. You see the bird with the flesh, flesh in its mouth, blood dripping onto your hand. Obviously shows that um, there is something um, weird going on uh, as to what the crows have eaten there. I don't know whether it's meant to be human flesh, whether it's that deliberate, or whether it's meant to be some kind of symbol for something else. I just wanted to stop that and point that out. Okay, we'll carry on now. Goes black and white for a second and then comes back. And you hear the um, fire from that gun down there. And it fires a big shell at you that lands behind you and destroys the bandstand where the politician was. Um, now this shows instantly to me that there is a bit of civil war going on within this city. Which I think is very interesting. He then snipes the guy that's... Um, supplying the ammo I assume um, and then another one gets fired but yeah like I say it obviously shows some form of civil unrest uh, if you ask me um, because well they wouldn't want to um, well if you were going to take out a target you'd use a gun you wouldn't try to destroy the city would you then a flat one goes under the arch I'm going to pause it here because I wanted to show you a bit of Columbia. Obviously, as you can see down there, there is a hotel um, with some more protes, pro posters, sorry. And I can just read that one. It says to protect them from the foreign hordes and the traitors. I can't tell what that last word says. But still, it's obviously, like I say, a very nationalist um city let's not make assumptions about the whole country just yet um but we might learn out uh, learn a bit more about colombia but it's set in, in 1912 so it was probably a very nationalist time um if i know my american history all right um it was sort of um well it was nationalist they didn't really greet foreigners very well at all uh, I wouldn't go as far as like 1920s, 30s, where it was uh, racially, um, um, ra well, there was racial segregation, but at the moment it's clear to see that, um, yeah, foreigners aren't welcome. So, um, I will just play to the end of this zip wire, um, which will again show you some more features that I'll point out, and then that will be the end of part one. It falls off here and very cleverly grabs onto the next one. Starts laughing ironically. I wouldn't laugh, I'd probably be like... Whoa. Right, so there you can see it's above the sky because there's clouds down there. And then you melee some guy and he... D yeah, he dies. Um, and nearly get owned. So, I'm gonna leave it there as he's walking in and there's a big bear. So, a few key points to think take from this part one. Uh, we learn a lot about the environment of Colombia, that it's a floating city. We learn a lot about the setting, Nationalist America, 1912. We learn something about the people that are going to be in it. Uh, we've got politicians. Um, we learn about the civil unrest that's within the, ta uh, the city of Colombia. Uh, and we also learn something about powers, as we've seen telekinesis and summoning animals. Um to disposal so yes thank you for watching part one of my bioshock gameplay footage dissection stay tuned for part two that will probably be out tomorrow thank you for listening this has been ollie from double cinema gamers rate comment and subscribe thank you